Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So what I wanted to work on today, I've been looking at the quest book here, and it looks like a lot of quests are locked out of being completed until we get mob farming. Like, we need mob farming for this. We need mob farming, I think, for, uh, yeah, the ember stuff. There might be a few more, but either way, there's, a, like, two big sections here that are just locked out until we get the mob farming done, and we can't do mob farming until we get ourselves a golem, right? An ancient golem. So we need to get this. These aren't spawning. I haven't seen them around uh, in our mob farm. And even if they do spawn, they're just going to get killed by the spike automatically. We're never going to kill them to complete that quest. We do have to kill them by hand in order for that to be completed, right? So I think what we're going to do, I think we're going to head to the hunting dimension today. We're going to craft the portal. We're going to go there. And yeah, we're going to try and figure out a way to do this relatively safely. Uh, we do have this armor that we can use over here, which we'll probably take with us. I think we can repair this with void crystals on an anvil. So it's not the end of the world. This gets dinged up a little bit. But I think what we're going to do is try and get this done. So uh, the hunting dimension, it says right click in the portal frame with a sword in your hand, then shift to go to the dimension, a dimension just in case mobs aren't trying to spawn in the overworld. So this wants us to make the hunting dimension frames, and that is an arrow surrounded by logs, so that's easy enough for us to do. Let's get rid of that. So we need some logs and we need some arrows. Well, I have arrows on me, actually. Let's just grab some logs. Okay. Now, I don't know if this has to be like the standard nether frame size or what. Uh, we will do... I'm, I'm going to see if I can do a three by three like we did with the nether portal over here. I don't know if you can do that or not, so we'll figure this out. Uh, so it said we have to right click with a sword in hand. Again, I don't know if this sword will work or if we have to use uh, like a vanilla sword. I assume this sword will work, but we'll find out. So let's see. I guess I'm just going to put it right next to this. So we'll move this torch over. Put that right here. That should be fine. Uh, actually, that needs to go over one more, right? And we're going to do a three by three by three. I don't know if you can do that with this particular block, but we will find out. Uh, let's see here that, and then this. Whoops, I placed that incorrectly. All right, and there we go. So does this work? Do I have an extra one of those to place here? Yeah, this is really ugly looking, but <laughs> just to get us going. Ah, it does work. Okay, so you can do a three by three. And the sword does work. Now, before we go through there, there's something else that I want to do. I was kind of looking through JEI to see uh, if we have like a mega torch or magnum torch or some kind of way to prevent mobs from spawning nearby. And I'm not seeing that, but uh, there are the interdiction torches that we can create. You craft four of them, and this just repels monsters away from the torch itself. So we can put this around a portal and have like a safe entry. And then if mobs try shooting at us, it's just going to uh, prevent those projectiles from coming towards us. So if nothing else, this will allow a safe entry into the dimension. And then it might be where we can, you know, walk up to the monsters and just hit them and they can't hit us. I don't know. So we'll figure that all out as we get there. Uh, did I not put that torch down over here? I don't think I put that torch down over here. So we're going to need a torch up here most likely to prevent mobs from spawning. We also needed one down here as well. Okay, so just make sure nothing's going to spawn when it becomes nighttime here in our base area. Okay, so Interdiction Torch. Let's take a look at this guy. This requires us to have Molten Core, Nebulous Hearts, and Blaze Rods. Could you hear my cat meowing in the background? <laughs> uh, so we need two Molten Cores to make Blaze Rods. How are we doing on Molten Cores? Ah, we have exactly two. Uh, how do we get these? These comes from the common loot bags. I don't know which loot bag would be best. Well, it looks like you can get those from the artifact loot bags and there's less other stuff. I mean, these are the cheapest ones, but are we going to be able to get it? I don't know. Okay. Well, I've already, <laughs> my kitty keeps meowing. Uh, we've already, uh, opened up a bunch of loot bags over here and we got a bunch of stuff. We do have dark bow, which is pretty cool too. Uh, this got the pocket anvil thing on it. That's fairly new. I think in ender IO, I'm not really sure where 
or when that was added. I think that might just be added in the newest update. But anyway, let's grab some more chests here so we have some space available for us to keep uh, opening loot bags into. We'll put these away. I can't put those away. I guess you can't right click on those with the chests in your hand. Okay, let me grab some of these guys. Now, as we've seen before, we cannot shift click out of here or it takes two at a time. Well, I guess we have 9,000, so it should be okay if we shift click them, but yeah, honestly, I don't, actually, you know what we can do? We can just queue them out and put them on the ground like this and then they'll just pick up in our inventory, right? I think that'll be just fine. All right, so let's do shift right click onto this chest a few times and then we gotta do it on the other side. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the middle one. Cool. Now, did we get any of these uh, molten cores? I'm not seeing them. All right, well, I'll tell you guys what, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do this until we get uh, these molten cores that we need and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I opened up a bunch of bags and I've thrown away things that weren't stacking, like the extra bows that we had, a bunch of like the astral sorcery, constellation papers, music discs, etc. Uh, so we have gotten a lot of enchanted books. We got a mending book, which is pretty cool. So we can get bibliocraft going and like duplicate that. That could be useful. Uh, we got, I thought I saw Civ Fortune, Civ Fortune 2, not 3, but that's still pretty good. Uh, again, bibliocraft would help us like duplicate that book and we could put it onto a bunch of our sieves. Yeah, that'd be really, really cool. But we're probably gonna have to wait until we get a way that we can repair the enchanted book since you can only... Do it so many times that we don't have a way to generate XP and all those kinds of things. But yeah, we got a bunch of good stuff here. But the important thing was these molten cores. Now, these are new ones. Our original one should still be in here. If I can click on this molten... Or maybe that... Okay, never mind. I guess that is our original ones plus the new ones. All right, I thought I put those away. Guess not. Okay, so we have blaze rods. Oop, we got the advancement into fire. Oh yeah, I did end up making small storage crate. Now you can't shift right click the loot bags onto the small storage crate. You can do it onto the vanilla chests. And then I was just transferring stuff from the chest back over to here. Anyway, uh, so we have the blaze rod. We need a molten core, a nebulous heart, and a bat wing. Uh, nebu nebulous heart and bat wing. But we only got one bat wing. Do we have any more in here? Oh yeah, we got six more in here. So we are really good on that. Did we get any? Oh yeah, we got a bunch of nebulous hearts. Check that out. Okay, so that's really good. And then the frozen cores give you snowballs. All right, so we should be able to do the interdiction torch now. We got four of them. Now it's not a whole lot, but it should be enough. So if I like take my bow and arrow and shoot. Oh, I thought that prevents projectiles from going through. Maybe it only works if it's a monster's projectile. Hmm, okay. Well, I guess we're gonna have to check that out. Let's go ahead and drop some of this stuff off. Uh, I don't need those guys or the blaze rods. Now we got arrows on us, bow, sword. Uh, we have our armor ready to go. So we're gonna go to the hunting dimension and spam these torches down and hope that they affect monsters because they didn't affect my arrows. And I could have sworn when I've used them before that they did, but I don't know. All right, so here we go into a new dimension. So we're just going to put these torches down. Well, it's keeping the monster at bay, but it's not like preventing the projectiles, huh? Hmm. Does it have something to do with the baby skeletons or maybe... The interdiction torches just don't work. Well, our armor's taking damage, so we will have to, like, fix that eventually. So how is this working as far as the zombies are concerned? Are they going to come over here? So it looks like they're kind of being blocked. Okay, so the interdiction torch doesn't really have a large range, but it does keep the monsters away. We can attack them. Okay, so that's really the important thing here. Whoa. Dweller, I guess those guys are invisible until you attack them. I see another dweller over there. Uh, really what I want to do is get myself uh, a golem. And that's really the only reason we are here. This sword it does not have very good damage, does it? This guy's trying so hard to get to me. 
Yeah. So I guess if we're going to use the interdiction torches, we're going to want a lot more of them. They seem to work, but they don't work as well as I would like. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any of the golems around. That's unfortunate. Okay, let's put the bow in the offhand. Yeah, that spider can't get to me, or at least it shouldn't be able to. Maybe it can drop on my head. I don't know. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so my arrows are kind of like bouncing back a little bit. Hmm, that's kind of odd how this works. Yeah, I'm not really sure. But anyway, I'm just going to kind of hang out here until we find an ancient golem, and then we'll be back. All right, guys. Well, I just saw a golem spawn over here, so we're going to go for this one. Hopefully, it'll work out. We can just get it from a distance here. There's one shot, two shot. Sounds like something's attacking me, but we're going to go for this. It's almost dead. One more. Oh, did we not get credit for that? There we go. I was about to I was about to say we should get credit for that. Cool. All right. So we have done everything that we need to do here. Let's get out of this dimension. It's terrible. Advancement made, Ender IO basics. What? Okay. So that just happened. Uh, so if we go to our quest book, this is now done. The hunting dimension. Oh, you know what? That wanted us to have the 14 hunting frames in our inventory, and we only had 12, right? I guess we can take down the portal here and make another set of them and then put them all back in our inventory. I guess that's a thing that we can do. What, what did this cost? That was an arrow plus some logs. You know what? We can just make some more and then throw them away because, honestly, that doesn't matter. Let's just use what's left of our arrows. I've been spending a whole bunch of them there. There you go. That should complete that quest. And we'll I'll have to restock up on arrows here in just a little bit. Cool. So hunting dimension quest is now complete as well, which is great. You know, I'll just stick that in here. It's fine. Do that. Sort everything. Okay. So we now have this quest complete. This quest complete. Uh, it has unlocked the ability for us to do red heart canisters, so that's interesting. Um, if we go to the beta tab, we now have mob grinding utilities. For some reason, utilities. Yeah, that is spelled incorrectly. Uh, I was like, that doesn't look right. There's like an extra L. It's like ultilities or something. Anyway, uh, so we have this uh, available now. So Absorption Hopper, Mob Fan, Singularity Tank, Iron Spikes. I think we can do that. We got plenty of iron for that. Let's go ahead and start working on this stuff. I think that will be just fine. So let's grab some iron. Iron, some ingots. Um, back to the quest. I should probably... Well, no, it's fine. I was going to say I should probably bookmark all these things. But let's just make these spikes real quick and get that quest knocked out. So we need, was it two swords or three swords? I guess I should have bookmarked this. Three swords is what we need. So three of those and that and that, and there we go. And then it was a block of iron plus these swords, I believe. Awesome. Okay, so we got that done. So the absorption hopper, let's go ahead and bookmark this. I am gonna bookmark these otherwise. It's just gonna be a real pain trying to figure out what it is that we're trying to make here. So absorption hopper requires us to have a hopper, an eye of ender, so that is different. That requires requires Kamenite blend. So that is clay plus sand. I don't know if we have any extra clay. Not really. How are we doing on dust situation? We have some compressed dust that I can convert into clay. Well, let me go ahead and get this made real quick, and we will be right back. Okay, so I am preparing a little bit of destabilized redstone to be poured into blocks, and that casts up really fast. So now we have three blocks of redstone. Or I'm sorry, it like solidifies really fast. It takes forever to melt down. Uh, but yeah, back here I did end up putting in another crucible with a heat sand underneath it, so it has a rate of 120. And then we have a liquid translocator that's pulling out of the crucible and into our seared tank here. So we're keeping our smeltery uh, completely stocked full of lava. And then I have a hopper back here with some cobblestone that's just feeding to the side into this crucible. I feel like that's pretty much all the lava we're ever going to need for the smeltery. So I didn't go too crazy with this, but yeah, that's how we got that set up now. Uh, but anyway, we should have everything ready to go in order to do these mob grinding util, util quests. The Eye of Ender, this does have to be done in a 3x3. Three three. You can't do this in a 2x2. Two two. It has to be, it's a shaped recipe. So you can't just put it in any which way. 
So there is the vacuum hopper, and then we'll do a mob fan. There's that, and then finally a singularity tank, and there we go. Okay, so we have a couple extra redstone blocks and some iron that we can put away, but that really should be all that we need for that quest. Yeah, there we go. Quest complete, mob grinding utils, awesome. So that unlocks the quest for the mob masher. So a mob masher. I think we looked at this recipe before. Yeah, that's not so bad. Some iron swords, some diamonds, redstone block, iron, and then two of these iron spikes. Yeah, that, none of that is really that difficult. Uh, was that all the quest wanted? Yeah, so it's just one mob masher. So I'll go ahead and craft that up. What else do we have here that I might do off camera as well? So that looks like the Woot mod. I don't think we're going to be able to do that. That does require a lot of power. So I think that's all we can do for this little section here. And then I am interested in looking at the dank knolls as well. We were not able to do these previously because we needed the empowerer. But now that we have that, oh, this also requires dark steel. What does it cost for dark steel? Let's check this out. Uh, so we can cast it out and we can alloy it. So that's molten obsidian, liquefacted coal, or we can put steel in obsidian and then I'll make dark steel. Is there another way to do this? Is there like, is there a way to make the ingots in like some kind of an alloy machine or an alloy kiln or it doesn't really look like it does it. There's an alloy furnace, but that is from nuclear craft. So that's going to require a lot of RF. So we don't have that available just yet. There is the alloy smelter from Ender IO. Can we do this? I wonder. That requires Ender ingots. Oh boy. Yeah, this is stuff that we haven't done yet. We haven't even started into Ender IO. Okay, well, I tell you guys what. I'm going to go ahead and craft up this mob masher real quick. And then I will look at trying to make the redstone dink knolls. And the next tier is upgraded from the previous tier. I don't know with this style of recipe if it keeps the inventories or if it deletes the inventory. So that'll be something we'll have to look at when we get there. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and craft up this stuff and we'll be right back. Well, it definitely looks like dark steel can be made in the smeltery. We have one full block in there and partial these other ones. I just put another piece of obsidian in here to try and convert some of this molten steel into more dark iron. But anyway, we'll go ahead and make this full block here. Ooh, that takes a while for that to harden. Of course it does. Ah, all right. Well, we are going to need four of those ingots, I do believe. Oh, no, we are going to need a lot more than that. We're going to need like two blocks worth, aren't we? Okay, so I need to make a whole bunch more of this stuff. I did make the mob masher, so we have that now, and we can claim this quest. But yeah, the uh, redstone dankness, this quest right here, that's going to take a little bit of time to get. Okay, so more iron, more coal, more obsidian. Let's go. Okay, so now that we have the dark steel and I empowered some redstone on, we should be able to make some progress here. So we're going to take some regular glass, we're going to dye it red, turn it into glass panes, we're going to throw away the extra glass because that's just going to take up extra space that we don't need taken up, and we're going to craft four of these guys. So there is four redstone dank knoll panels. Now in order to make the dank knoll, we do need a dev knoll, which is a piece of cobblestone and an apple. I think we can do that. Apple and cobble. This guy, that guy. So there's a dev knoll. And then we have to put that into the three by three with these panels around it. And there is a, there is a dink. There, there, there was a dink knoll and now it doesn't exist. What the? Is this recipe busted? If I shift click it, I shift click it and I don't have it anymore. What the heck? Uh, rotate. Okay, if I rotate the grid, it's there. And if I try and take it out, it doesn't work. Um, now I wonder if it's a problem with this crafting station. Let's try a regular vanilla crafting table. This might be a bug that needs to get reported. I'm not sure what's up. All right, so let's put down this guy and this, 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 and that. Oh, it just doesn't even show up in this one. Well, that's weird. It doesn't show up in this one, but it does show up over here. 
Uh, let's double check the recipe. Yeah, it just says regular crafting. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I cannot gift this to craft, and I am not sure why. All right, guys. Well, I was just playing around, trying some things here. I was able to craft the dank knoll. There appears to be a problem, and the problem is with the dev knoll and the recipe. Yeah, anyway, uh, what I did was I took the dev knoll, I right, shift right clicked on it, I put uh, void crystals in there, and then I took the void crystals back out, and then I was able to craft this dev knoll. Yep, so we should get the quest complete now. Yeah. So there's just a little bit of a problem with the NBT data, I guess, on the dev knoll, or the, yeah, the dev knoll that's part of this recipe. Yeah, just crafting it by default and trying it this way did not work until I put something in there and then took something out and then tried it. Well, anyway, we are able to craft this thing now, which is great. So this gives us one line worth of stuff. And I don't remember how much this holds. Is it a thousand per line or something? Well, anyway, this will be pretty good for us going to the nether and vein mining a whole bunch of nether rack and just like not wanting a whole lot of it because it'll fill up the slot and then just delete all of the extra. So that would be really good for that scenario. Cool, well we were able to craft it, so let's go ahead and claim that. So the next one is the Lapis Dink Knoll. So if we look at that one, let's just search for Dink Knolls. So the Lapis one requires the Dink Knoll, the redstone, and then that requires us to have the Lapis stuff. But yeah, this does require more dark steel. And yeah, we're gonna need, what is that, 16 more for each one of these. 16 more for that one, 16 more for this one, and then we're gonna need aluminum brass ingots, so that's kind of a different one. That's really not that bad, to be honest, to go up to that, what is this, the one, the Mark IV? Then the uh, Dink Knoll panel, this one does require empowered diamonds, and finally, the emerald one, yeah, empowered emeralds, but that is a lot of dark steel for us to get in order to upgrade all the way to the top and it does not look like there's a recipe for the creative one yeah so that's a lot of stuff for us to do now we could go up to the lapis one right now but i'm not really sure it's worth us doing that uh there's also this dink dock which is not expensive at all so let's just go ahead and craft this for redstone for emerald and in obsidian we got just a little bit of obsidian left so emerald and redstone. Yeah, let's get these quests knocked out as we can do them. So this guy, cool. So that should be all we need. So the dink dock will allow us to put our dink knoll into it. Like you set it into it in the real world and you can extract out of it using this thing. So you don't have to like try and shift click all the items out and empty your inventory and do that over and over again. So yeah, that's a good way to automate getting rid of stuff out of it. Or I think you can hook it up to Applied Energistics. I can't remember how that all works. But anyway, let's go ahead and claim that reward. And I think that is all of our pending rewards up until this point. So let's put everything away into our AE system right now. Or sorry, not AE, our uh, storage system anyway. And if we search for our AK, well, I guess we don't have to search for it. We have, what is that, 256 plus 44. So roughly 300 RAK. We still need, I think it was 780 for flight. Let's go back and take a look at that. Saturation, absorption, flight. Yeah, 768. So we are nowhere close to getting this just yet, unfortunately. And we'll, we'll get it eventually, but we got a lot more quests to do before we will be able to get that one done. All right, so now we need to find ourselves another quest to do. All right, so I think the next quest that we should take a look at is probably upgrading our armor further. So we have the Void Crystal Armor, and we can go to Aluminum, then Gold, Silver, Electrum, Constantan, uh, Chain, Nickel, Lead, Iron, Lapis, Bronze, Invar, Steel, Black Quartz, and I don't think we can get to Thorium or Boron. I think we're going to have to hold off on that, but I think we can get all the way to Black Quartz, I think. But first things first, our armor is currently dinged, uh, I did make these void crystals earlier to see if it was possible for us to repair, and it absolutely is. So we're going to repair each one of these pieces of armor here so we can upgrade to the next level since it does not appear that you can upgrade partially damaged armor. Okay, 
So each one of those is now upgraded, or I guess uh, fully repaired. And let's get rid of this stuff here. So the next armor in line would be the aluminum armor. All right, so how are we doing on aluminum? We have quite a bit of it. So, hmm, which blocks? We have thermal foundation, we have the regular aluminum blocks from Galactic Craft, and when you unblockify them, they turn into magnetic craft aluminum. And we currently have thermal foundation. Yeah, there's, there's just, I don't know. There's just too many different uh, ores in this mod pack right now. I'm gonna see if we can get that cleaned up a little bit. Uh, but anyway, here's an aluminum helmet, and then we need the aluminum chest plate and aluminum pants. There's those are the leggings, I guess, and then the feet. Cool. So there is the full set of aluminum armor. And I don't know if that gives you any additional shirts. Oh, it does. It looks like that's one extra. Okay. And how's the durability on this? It, the durability is okay. It's probably slightly better than the last armor that we did. So let's claim that. We'll do the next one. The next one is gold. I don't think there's going to be anything crazy about this. It was like gold and then iron, I think, right? So I tell you guys what, there, this is going to be a whole lot of me just doing a bunch of crafting and gathering resources that we already have smelted and things. Let me just go ahead and craft a whole bunch of this stuff and I'll bring you guys back in when we can't get any further. All right, well, we're, we were able to get all the way up to Electrum, but the next one is Constantan and we don't have that. Now, in order to make this stuff, we take a look at the recipe here. We can cast it out, which means we can make molten stuff, which means we can alloy nickel and copper. But I kind of feel like I just wanted to make the kiln bricks itself. So I have some regular bricks and we can make some sandstone out of sand. So let's do that. Grab some of those, this, that. And I think we need eight of these. I think, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, let's come over here and do this. We need a total of eight of the kiln bricks. Yeah, so there we go. And then it's a two by two structure. We're gonna need the engineer's hammer in order to convert this into the multi-block. Oh, you know what, I should, guess I should grab the stuff while we're here. So that in the alloy kiln is nickel and copper. Let's grab nickel, oh, we're gonna need more than that. Nickel and then copper. I really don't know how much of this, we need a total of 24 and I don't remember if this uh, doubles or whatever, but we probably will need extra, so it won't hurt to have a little extra. All right, so let's grab this stuff and we will bring it over here by the rest of our immersive engineering multi-blocks. And we will just set this right there. It should be fine. We'll put a torch on there and then we got to boop it. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have this, oh, I guess I should have brought some fuel over here. I forgot to do that. So nickel and copper, yeah, we need something to fuel that, and I guess we can just use uh, coal or charcoal or whatever. Um, let's grab a coal. That should be more than enough, I believe, in order to get this going here. So we will do that. And yeah, we should be able to get ourselves some constant tan. Now going back to here, after that chain armor, I haven't looked at what this requires yet, the nickel and lead. Like a lot of this stuff is pretty easy to do, but we are starting to run out of time for this episode. So we'll go ahead and suit up with our Electrum armor to close it out. But yeah, that is it for this episode of Project Ozone 3. Yep, hope you guys liked the episode. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like if you did, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.